So seemingly, despite of all of what we have talked about in the absence of words or the impermanence of words and how, how it's seemingly seen that the words just make up more words to maintain a word um, that seemingly is real, although real is just a word, and surprisingly, what is glaringly obvious that what is impermanent of what is glitching seemingly all the time is the illusory self, that persistent self that is maintained, um, which of course creates a variation of itself by being a higher or a lower self, but there's no such thing as a self. But what becomes a central focus that is persistent um, by ignoring the permanence, which is the unknowable vastness, which is often ignored because it cannot be caught in a thought, then it creates this delusion <laughs> that of separation. A separation which is very persistent because it creates this, this, or that. It's like a, a sham or constant gaslighting of itself, sensing something is wrong, but feeling that you're not able to put your finger on it, but constantly practicing to be aware of itself. Or even a creation of a grandiose idea of what itself is through practices like contemplation, inquiry. It's like back, it's, it's back to belief systems in words like religion. Um, it's a self-maintaining illusion maintained by the self. There's nothing wrong or right about that, um, but it creates this dualistic expression of something that's not even there. So the romanticized idea of a higher self that appears as many different words like God, um, consciousness, awareness, uh, creates this attractive um, bonus, attractive um, carrot that creates a, um, an attainment of some sort. But there was never a self in the first place, and that archaic system maintains the illusion of the self by gaslighting itself. <laughs> uh, in short, gaslighting is like a subtle form of emo emotional manipulation that often results in the recipient doubting the perception of duality. There's no self, but how come I feel this way? It's like a schizophrenia. Um, it's often hard to figure out something that's not there so it creates variations of itself, invalidating itself, validating itself, dismissing itself, accepting itself, rejecting itself, and all of this back and forth, back and forth. It even creates a blissful um, idea of itself as the ultimate or as an absolute. But what it does is it's insanity because it keeps on repeating over and over something into a reality that doesn't exist a reality that is just an idea, a reality that is just a fantasy. Um, so seemingly, you know, when there's a seeking, it's exactly like gaslighting, right? <laughs> because it creates this um, feeling of const constantly feeling confused, that it's going crazy, doubting itself, um, having difficulty trusting itself and other people because there's really nothing there feeling the need to um, apologize, saying it's just making excuses, actions, and all of this, tons of these emotions that tries to avoid what is by creating variations of what is by labeling it. And then all of a sudden, you know, it's asked itself, you know, um, what is wrong with me? Is there something that I need to do? So it creates this internal dialogue to question its reality by making it real. It creates this seeking so that it can seek over and over itself because there'll be nothing to find. Seeking creates this idea that there's something that needs to be sought for. 
Seeking creates this narrative that there is something missing. Seeking creates this dualistic expression of something that cannot be sought for because what it's seeking is actually absent. The self will never find a self because there's no such thing as a self. It's just a word looking for a word that does not exist because words are not even real. And, um, <laughs> and then it's maintaining the word by creating this narrative of after, happily ever after, enlightenment, awakening, dissolution, all of these words that create this mountain pile of words to hide the obvious that there is no self. There is no self and there's no no self. So even it creates a fail safe that it, when the self becomes a no self, then it will have liberation. But there was no self in the begin, to begin with. There's no me in the first place. And the me that it's seeking for itself is just another word longing for a better word or for the absence of words. Um, <laughs> and again, <laughs> going back to what we've been talking about, what is apparently happening is not even happening because the moment that it gets captured as a, as a truth, as a, an idea, as a something that's graspable, something that can be digested, then it's digesting its own words. It's kind of like cannibalizing its own self. It's eating its own words. And the words that maintain the words are just a word in itself. Um, there's no real liberation because there's no real and there's no liberation. When all the words are yanked out, which is created by the self, it's just this blank. Whatever appears, insert whatever here. And that's what's just being suggested. And um, someone actually asked me if this is a, a, a bit like a, um, a brainwashing, but there's no brain to begin with. Or is it like a deprogramming? <laughs> so there is the cult of the self, right? That creates this dualistic expression of something that cannot be separated. And it's almost like a translator into dualities. The moment that you think or there is a feeling of something, then it creates this movement in stillness. But the movement in stillness is also what is. And what is can never be figured out because what's trying to be figured out does not exist. So there's really nothing to talk about <laughs> in that sense. <laughs> I really like that poem that you sent, Steve. That was really great. Um, so what is being sought for by the self? The self is looking for its reality and hoping that it finds reality by seeking a grander version of itself. But since the self creates the grand version of itself, there's no such thing as a higher self or the self with a capital S or the me or the no me. It's just words basically playing with each other, and there's really absence in anything. But without thoughts, without there'll be nothing to talk about without any words. So what we're doing is just we are just speaking in dream speaking, dreamlish speaking in tongues of something that's quite obvious that is appearing in both words and no words. And uh, <laughs> it's funny because when someone asks me, is this a form of gaslighting? Because you're basically saying that there's no you, there's no one here. Um, there's no you and there's no no you. It's the biggest misconception, right? That there's a no you. For a no you to happen, there must have been a you in the beginning. Is there, if there's a me, if there's a no me, then people assume that there was a me. D do you get what I'm trying to say? So when there is, there is, is a kind of like a, a position, well, there's a me there, or there's a no me there, then that's just another narrative. It does sound like gaslighting because it's creating, it's creating this false narrative that there was something to begin with. And the funny thing about this is, you know, my father and my family always ask me uh, what I'm talking about, but they don't even know what non-duality is because for them, it's just a word. It doesn't have any meaning. It doesn't have any purpose. 
But somehow, you know, so in the non-duality circle, there's always going to be, well, that's not non-duality or that's non-duality. There's no such thing as non-duality because non-duality is just another creation of the self to maintain that there was separation in the first place, that there's a correction. But when there is no knowing of what is, when it's just unknowable, there's no position, there's no, you know, there's no figuring out. If we're really talking about non-duality, the moment that there's a debate about non-duality, it's not non-duality anymore <laughs> because it's already two. Simply not two means it's undebatable. It can't even be talked about. It can't even be uttered. Words will not be able to describe what non-duality is, although we're using non-duality as a concept, as an idea that nothing has been separated. But what's obvious is there's simply not two. We'll call it non-duality or radical non-duality. But seemingly the moment that non-duality becomes a, a, an attainment or an understanding of an apparent self, there's no self or me, then it's dualistic already. But there's nothing wrong or right about that, right? Because everything is just a word maintaining a word. And, uh, and non-duality, this is just a story, uh, uncompromising, is almost like the last door. But there's no door. <laughs> there's no, no getting in. There's no exiting it. It's almost like the interrogation room that simply there never was. When it's seen that it is just no separation, there's never been any non-duality at all. Because there's no self that figured out or not could not figure out what non-duality is. Simply, it's just unthinkable. So let's discuss the unthinkable, if you would like to express, <laughs> talk about it more. Um, and uh, thank you for coming again. Have I seen 19, 1899? Oh, no, I haven't. Tell me about it, Paulette. I don't know what it is about. I've never seen it. <laughs> There's a question here. Um, hi, Emerson. I know I asked this from the last meeting, but can you simply talk about what was talked about yesterday? Because it's so clear and I'm trying to navigate through it about words. And that's what really, really stuck with me. Can you briefly talk about it again for the last time? Um, I can't remember what I talked about. Again, what this, uh, the rise and fall of the empire of words is just basically an expose, right? That if you strip down, you know, if you really look at the words, they don't really have any meaning. Meaning that if you look looking for a meaning in words, all you will ever find are more words. And when there is an attachment to a word, it just goes into a spiraling of more words, which is usually created by the apparent self. There's no self to maintain itself as real. So there are words that will stand out like truth, God, awareness, consciousness, which are just words. So again, what's being expressed there is just the same thing over and over and over again, that it's already done. Meaning that if there is no word that is real, because by creating a word, it simply creates this dualism. So when it's what's being expressed is simply not two, it means that there are no words. End of meeting. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So every single word is a separate appearance backed by another word to maintain a truth, you know? that is maintained by words. 
Thank you for liking that that intro from yesterday. Maybe that's all I do is I'll just keep on 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 maintain, you know on on uh, expressing those words over and over again. Where is the brain? Without words, what is the brain? Does an infant know what a brain is? So without words, there's no separation, there's no brain, there's no mind, there's no me, there's no self, there's no consciousness, there's no awareness. In complete darkness or in complete nothingness, there are no such things as words or brain, you know, anything at all. Nothing can be uttered. I mentioned this yesterday. If, if you were standing and all of a sudden your head got hit... <laughs> With a, with a flying object or something, and all of a sudden, you are incapable of thinking of words, meaning that there's just silence and it's just, it's just no words can come up anymore. Separation words would not make sense anymore. They'll just be a wholeness. Words just create a separation. So everything is just a story because they're just made up of words. And there's no words that will get you out of words. Words will just maintain words. <laughs> but there's nothing wrong with words because there are no words. And again, wrong or right are just words. It's just really simplifying, you know, clarifying something that cannot be clarified through words by exposing that words are clearly just illusory. <laughs> Thank you so much, Emerson. Uh, I really like the idea of the self guest lighting itself because it's not real. Yeah, if you if you hear um, <laughs> if you hear well, there's no such thing, right? But the illusory mind chatter of that you're not good enough, you're wrong. Um, I wish I did something more, or you're being paranoid, or you're crazy, or there's something off with you, or something. It's just it's the self talk. Is very gaslighty, right? Because there's no such thing as wrong or right, but it creates this illusory narrative of something wrong with you, although there's no you to be wrong or right. And it creates this suffering based on words, the swirling of words and trying to maintain that there is separation by pointing out what's wrong or right, or that, you know, or, or something preferred and not preferred creates this, this, this break, right? Of of it's kind of like a, a, a the, it's it's insanity that there is something you know something real about words that makes it powerful. Oh, I, I missed the other question. Sorry. There's a whole bunch of question here. It is a story about how the brain creates the illusion. Yeah. Oh, 1889. Okay. I'll watch it. I like TV shows. So the idea, the singular idea creates the illusion. The singular idea is, is, is not true. It's an illusion. So to maintain its reality it creates opposites. Bliss and not bliss. Heaven or hell, that kind of opposites, yeah. <laughs> so 
So what is is a better expression than what is happening? Yeah. Again, we're just, you know what, we're just basically kind of like nitpicking on words and everything, but ultimately all words are meaningless, but the simpli- simpler, you know what I'm saying? When it's simplified, like what is or as it is, it, 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 it does not create a, another illusory entanglement. But when it's seen that all words are all equally illusory, then it doesn't really matter what's said. But for the purpose, seemingly, there's no purpose of trying to express the inexpressible, the simpler it is, the better. Um, the, um, the less entanglement in creating another illusory idea of what is. For example, if I say that um, um, you have to be aware of the absolute awareness to be able to see the um, illusory nature of the self, then it, it kind of like goes in a roundabout way <laughs> of creating another imaginative illusion. Basically, what's being said is that you're not there. But by saying that you're not there, then it maintains that you are there. Does that make any sense? So it creates this, this opposites of, of or, or kind of like location, like absolute and the lower self and the higher self, um, the merging, the union, the abiding, the awareness, the consciousness, all of this are just swirling words to maintain its reality. If you yank out all of these, those words, that is just very um, deceptive, very deceptive because it creates this two-ness. Even when it, when it says that it's non-dual awareness, <laughs> That's just a loaded thing, right? Because how could there be non-dual in awareness when there is, even when someone says wordless awareness, it tries to create another imagination of what awareness is. It tries to create a location, a destination, or an attainment, or something that's missed. From a non-dual perspective, see, that's, that's another one. Right, it's just it's just all a play of words, and, and it's just a deceptive, a very effective way of creating this idea of not being there yet. But there was never there anyway. But yeah, I, I like that. Um, what is? I use a lot of what is lately. Um, I was using words like emptiness before, and then I figured out, someone told me that um, in Buddhism, they use a lot of words like emptiness. I'm like, oh, shoot. <laughs> I was just trying to find words that does not create more imagination of what is, what cannot be talked about. or creates intoxication or drunkenness, right? Because when, when, um, when it's being expressed that there's never been anyone here, then it creates, then it must be all whatever, insert word. So it creates this narrative again, rather than just seeing the obvious that what is trying to figure it out is non-existent. But non-existent and existence is just a word. <laughs> or simply not to I really like that lately simply not to so meaning that the moment that you think of what simply not to is that's already dualistic
the moment that there's movement, seeming movement, like acceptance or rejection, that is another illusion. Because who's accept, accepting and who's rejecting? That implies two. Recognition, inquiry, any movement. Again, you know what, what what's being expressed is kind of like I, I think I said this in, in the past, past, past meeting that it's like a game of chess with stillness. The moment that you make a movement, it's checkmate, it's stalemate. <laughs> because that's two. So how can you <laughs> so how can you win the game? You can't. Because really you're playing with yourself and you're not even real. So there's really no game playing. There's no players. There's no separateness. Or you can say that the illusion is just a game. But no players. Hi, Bipula. Hello. Hi, hi, um, Mr. Uh, oh, how are you? Uh, uh, well, uh, well, I, you know, I'm, I'm speaking from Sri Lanka, a country that you might not even, uh, you know, uh, think of. Oh wow! It's uh, yeah, it's it's. I'm it's from an Ontario, island, so there's a lot of Sri Lankan here. Ah, okay, yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thanks uh, uh, for this meeting, and my question is now. Uh, some of the pointers you are using, like no free will and and uh, unknowability, and yeah. also um, even to say that there's no one inside the body. You know some yeah. of these examples. Um, uh, given the the right perspective, uh, they they could shed light to mm. what you are trying to say. But then again, for whom? Oh, you just cut out there, Vipula. For whom? And then it cut out there. Yeah, yeah. So that was my question. I mean, it can shed light to yeah. what you are attempting to say. Yeah. So eloquently, of course. But then, yeah. but then again, for whom? You know. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if you were here yesterday, but we we clarified a lot of things yesterday, right? For example, okay. that the yeah. one that is seeking is just really a word. So the word you know, which is unknowable because it's just a word and it's not even real. Some people will call it a self, a me, an I, an idea of, of separation, basically, that initial spark of thinking that it's separate. Um, but separation is non-existent because it's just an illusion. So it creates this apparent idea of free will or choice, you know, idea of, of its being kind of like independent, looking for itself. Um, so there's really no one that is being communicated to. What's being expressed here, the illumination is that simply there's no one to begin with. But somehow there's this persistent illusion of independence that there's a thinking that there is someone that is separate from this. And usually that someone is the one that is seeking its own absence. 
but by, by seeking, seeking its own absence, it maintains its reality that creates that there was a reality in the first place. So the me is looking for its own absence, but, but in the seeking itself, maintains its reality by thinking that there was something missing. Does that make any sense? <laughs> it doesn't probably. <laughs> yes, yes, it does. It does. Uh, Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Vipal. Keep the questions coming. But yeah, it's, it's just simply uh, the me is an illusion, but a very persistent one. Right? So the me even creates a no me, thinking that it can disappear. But in that very, you know, very thought, in that very essence, then it just creates an alternate version of itself as being absent, but still maintained by a me. Exactly. That was my point. Thanks, Emerson. Thank Thanks you. Thank you, Vipula. Thank you. Hello, Sri Lanka. Question here. Um, is the thought thinking itself and then the body reacts and then an idea says it's me? Um, let's just simplify it, right? So there is a, a, a spark or an idea or a word of separation, usually called the self, right? So, um, but that self is obviously an error in perfection because there's really no separation. So it's, it's, like, a, it's like an illusion or a dream. But that dream, because it's a dream, is, is, um, is already not real. Does that make any sense? So the moment that it happens, it then happens right away. And, but because it's not really real, it creates this separate aspects of itself, like, you know, the body or the brain, you know, the idea, time, physical, material, inside, outside, all to disguise that the original separating idea is, is non-existent. So it creates this dualistic expression of itself as real, not real, words, silence, to hide the fact that it never existed in the first place. It's like a perfect mistake that never happened. <laughs> it's unthinkable. But keep the questions coming. I like that question, actually. Oh, okay. Right now, I notice narration in my mind. I have to find a perfect question to ask. If I don't ask a question, I will miss the valuable answer and miss the opportunity to make a step towards liberation. Should I follow this and try to force some clever questions? I know it's a ridiculous question, but I'm asking it in, it in case of what if it's actually necessary to ask a lot of deep questions before I arrive to some peace. It seems that it has to be a gradual path to peace. So I'm worried that I'm doing everything right. So to arrive at this goal, <laughs> that is perfect, actually. Any narrative maintains the narrative. Any narrative, any word maintains the word. When it's seen that this is transparently occurring and not occurring simultaneously, meaning that um, there's no one choosing to do all of this narration of trying to find the perfect question. So if the question arises or not, there's nothing wrong or right about that. But the one that's trying to maintain that there's something right or wrong about questions or that, you know, is, is again, is, is what's being pointed at here that is absent. So it's deceptively using all of this inquiry to try to figure out itself. But it will always come out empty-handed because there's nothing to figure out. What's, what it's trying to figure out is, it's, it's, is it real or not real? But real and not real 
is just another illusory device to create separation. It's either seeking for its own liberation, meaning the absence of it, the death of the ego, some will call it, you know, or enlightenment or awakening or something. But in that essence, it's actually maintaining its reality by making it real in the first place. The, uh, the freedom that is being expressed here is the wildness of what seems to appear as it is already. Not as a next or not as a prior, as a, as a consequence or a prerequisite. It's just what is. And that's even saying way too much, right? Because the one that is trying to um, <laughs> trying to navigate through this is actually nothing and not even nothing. All questions maintain the false be yes. Because it's longing for a question, longing for an answer that either validates it or invalidates it. Even invalidating it maintains that there was a me in the first place to invalidate. <laughs> but questions happen and answer happens. You know what I'm saying? It's, 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 it's not, there's really no, no importance or non-importance to it. There was no false me in the first place. <laughs> this is just really a swimming in words right the words is just swirling around in words and um the word that will come up just maintains another word um you know eliminates another word to maintain it but what's being expressed here is that in the absence of the hierarchy, although that's just a word, in the seeing that what is seemingly happening cannot be captured in words, the moment that the, it, it, it thinks of itself, it creates this, this uh, dualistic two-ness, apparently, right? It, it, it basically reinforces that there's two. Thank you for the questions, though. Although, you know what, questions are just appearances and answers are equally just appearances. Keep on asking. Yeah. This is just really a, simp a simple elimination that nothing is needed. <laughs> right now, the question crashes before it's asked. <laughs> That's been happening a lot lately in this apparent two days. <laughs> I really liked the last meeting that it towards the end. I could really, all that we could really do was just laugh <laughs> when all of the uh, questions and answers just sink back in, um, meaning that there's nothing that can be figured out because trying to figure it out is just simply not to. Frustrated. It feels so real, but there's no one here. Yeah, that's it though, right? What's wrong with feeling real and also absent at the same time? The moment that there's a thinking that there's something wrong or something off of that, then frustration appears. But simply when it's clearly seen that the frustration is also it, 
the feeling that there is reality is also it and that there's also no one here is also it. But the it cannot be captured as a word. It appears simply as everything, undivided. Yeah, I, I, Vlad, Vladia goes, um, yeah, I forgot at the beginning of my question. I just wrote, I noticed narration. It's all narration narrating itself further. Yes, it's just all stories, right? It's just a story maintaining the story that it's real, but real is just another story. So it just goes into this loop of stories and this intoxicating um, drunkenness in stories. And there's nothing wrong or right about that. So this drunkenness is, creates this real and unreal, wrong or right, me or no me, um, feeling real, but it's just, it's just this, it's, it's magical. <laughs> Oh, Charlie. Hi, Charlie. Sorry, I didn't see you. It's Charlie, I've been using Simply Not Too a lot lately. Thank you. Yeah, I, I noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, anyway, uh, the comment I would make is, uh, and of course, this is just a story that, uh, you know, there are a lot of speakers out there that, uh, that uh, look for some process or a lot of the questions are based on looking for a method or a process yeah. to, get to this uh, so-called liberation or whatever. Again, that's the story. But uh, <clears throat> addressing the words themselves seems to be the most direct way to get yes. <laughs> you know? And Because uh, most speakers will start and, uh, and as time goes on, there's just more words appearing. Yeah. And there may be an assumption at the beginning of that, that, uh, that uh, you know, words are in the, in the, are empty, or they're, they're, they're just all pointing to separation. But the more a person talks and so on and tries to explain or answer questions, uh, the more difficulties they're in. So it, it just seems that... Uh, uh, and I, I don't know that you, you may be the only one doing this, you know, devoting an entire program to uh, addressing the words themselves. And yeah. that is really uh, job one in this so-called non-duality to look at words themselves and realize that none of them, none of them are going to explain it that you can't get there with words. Yeah. So, but words appear, there are stories and uh, uh Somehow, if we remember that each one of them is a designation for separation, you know, yes. uh, you're immediately in separation if you say anything. Yeah. So that's, <laughs> that's if you notice, problem. like in Facebook, the moment that someone tries to argue about non duality, it's two already. It's two already. It's yeah. two already. Yeah. The minute you open your mouth, you're in exactly. two. Exactly. <laughs> Because yeah. it's just really a words, a word, a word play, right? It's just a, a, a war of words. But the, but when the moment that a word appears, it's simply not two. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's that's lesson number one. That's the yeah. story. Yeah. Uh, if you don't start there and kind of stay there. Yeah. Um, because it becomes another. It just becomes another concept, right? Without you know, it it it's so easy to get buried in words. For example, yeah. when it's repeated that it's just really nothing, but nothing is just another word. Yeah. It's not even nothing, right? It's just, and even that is, is, is just more words. Yeah. Um, so there's really no way out there's because no way a way out. out is dualistic. Yeah. Any way out is dualistic. Yeah. yeah. Figuring so it out is dualistic. Knowing it is dualistic. Yeah. A no me is dualistic. A me is dualistic. Everything yeah. that appears in the word is always going to be dualistic. Yeah. But there's no dualism because it's just a word. Yeah. So it's not really dualistic or non-dualistic. It's up in the air. <laughs> it's unthinkable. Yeah, you just can't get there from here. The, just, the, uh, what's funny is because I had a very, um, you know, this, this, Clarity, clarifying, just really simplifying is because there was this character that has been seeking for 40 years and basically said, 
I'm done. I'm, I'm so tired, Emerson. Uh, I'm just so tired. I just, you know, let's book a whole bunch of one-on-ones until we kind of like, you know. And then it became towards the end, maybe the fourth one or the third one. And I'm like, you know what? You're just, it's just getting caught up in words. And then all of a sudden when every single thing, and I'll be just, just, just a word. And there was like a big pause. And then it will come up with another word. That's just another yeah. word. Big yeah. Pause. And then there yeah. was just laughter and, 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 and nonstop laughter. Like, oh my goodness, here I was, you know, 40 years of words. Yeah. Yeah. Here I, here I am saying something. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it is about just run together words, you know, yeah. words and stories and separation yeah. are all equivalent. You know, they're all, they're all the same. And so it's not. Uh, yeah. It's and not there's, the word, yeah, know, and there's nothing it. wrong or right because they're just words. Well, nothing wrong or right. It's a story, you know, yeah. and a story is, uh, is how the world goes around, you know, Stories are out there, but just to identify words is a, maybe one word is the shortest story you could find. Yeah, um, is a, is is really the equivalent of uh, something that feels like freedom or peace. Mm. Oh, you cut out there, Charlie. You said freedom and peace, and then it cut out. <laughs> we'll, we'll wait for charlie to be recorded okay okay charlie you're back Thanks. don't want to say any more oh okay okay all but right i don't want to say mark is uh that's just my words Perfect. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. Yeah. Okay. Oops. Sorry. I'm going to put. But this apparent directness is going to be funny because it's, it's, it's really triggering, right? When words are are basically spotlighted and magnified as really can like if you look through the man magnifying glass of every single word that has ever been uttered um, and the importance of some of these words or, or the wrong or right about these words, especially specifically when there is a, um, a hidden belief system in the word in the hidden word in the self because it believes in itself. The self can only maintain itself. And, and it creates this uh, it creates this illusory variations of itself as awareness, as consciousness, as nothing or or whatever words that might come up to hide behind a word that is true, that is basically unquestionable or infallible, or something that cannot be grokked, right? <laughs> Which is just another word. So it just keeps on. You know, re, you know, it keeps on reincarnating in other words. It keeps on appearing as this word and word, and it appears in the argument and everything, but not really seeing that the culprit of the word is just the word. Steve. Oh, hi, Steve. If you think about that really mischievous word I. Ah, uh, yeah. It's it's capitalized. Yeah. It also stands for the numeral one. Yeah, separate. It's one. Yeah. And it's a symbol. Yeah. All in one. Um so it's kind of a self-reinforcing word yeah that's gone it's all gone yeah it is it is it's just it's just it's it's like it, a, a word that has gone viral <laughs> and here we are 
it's quite bril- bril- brilliant though you know what i'm saying if, if if it's seen from that you know like wow what it's like i get i get fascinated by nature shows like you know of how mushrooms the underground can like you know in mushrooms right of how expansive it is but the word is just the most viral thing and you can't get away from it because it was never there in the first place exactly yeah just a thought yeah so we're just really liberating from words right <laughs> Thank you. some sense of relief though for no one yeah yeah because the the stuckness is usually just in words even stuckness is just a word so there's real no real stuckness it's it's um i always share this that for quite a while you know, I, w- i was carrying it, it felt like i had a heavy burden but when it seemed that the big biggest burden that i had was just shame and guilt they were like big big rocks and when it was seen that they were just words there was lightness Hi, Emerson. Thank you for doing these meetings. I think you have found your greatest hit in this that is just all words. <laughs> Thank you. Again, there's always this clarity, right? But clarity. But as I said before, in, in, when I started talking about this, that there's um, the moment that um, speaking happens, it muddies what's already clear because what's muddying it is words. Because without any words, without any thoughts, there's just this clarity. It's like constantly waking up every morning and just this, and then the words get in the way, but there are really no words. <laughs> Thank you, though. All you have to do is keep on repeating this meeting over and over and over again, and that's it. This is a game changer. Thank you. Thank you. Charlie, go ahead. Sorry, I'm, I, I'm not seeing the... Oh, okay. Uh, you know, just an example of this is you hear often that the uh, the map is not the territory. Yes. And that, that's the kind of a wor- uh, words that, that are trying to protect <clears throat> their separation, it seems like. Because we realize that, you know, the map and the territory are both words. Yeah. But <laughs> But somehow, you know, people stop and say that's that's uh, that gets you out of the problem because you've settled on this other word, uh, territory, as to, to solve the problem that a, a word is not not real. So that's just an example that pops up. Some, some yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah, thank you, thank yeah. you, thank you.
Emerson, can you talk about other teachers or speakers that seemingly has clarity, but get trapped with words that they say? Um, I can't really speak about other teachers and speakers. It's just what is, um, you know, and, and who cares? You're here, <laughs> apparently. And we're, we're, we're exposing the, the, um, the fallacy of words. That's all, yeah. <laughs> there are no other speakers or teachers. Just another word. When you speak about lightness and collapsing of burden, there is a sense of envy like, I want that too. It's, it's a bit funny. Yeah, but you're, see, say I'll point that out, right? But the word is just envious of a word that it thinks is better. <laughs> All words are the same. They're not real. Or I could say that, oh, it's so dark, you know, and, but that's just another word. These are just words. These are just exposure that words, if you look under it, it's really nothing. It's not real because real is just a word. And not real is just another word. <laughs> So you really just want more words. <laughs> but there's nothing wrong or right about that. If you have a question, just in case, um, just, um, just um, raise your hand like this, just in case I don't see it on the thing. Sorry about that. Anyway, glad that you started hammering from the word because all these terminologies like awareness, consciousness, energy, presence can create separation again. Yes, that's, that's what was clearly seen, you know, um, um, by no one, of course, that it was just really transparent. Um, and, um, and then someone will say that, you know, are you just not talking about the same thing? The difference is I'm not talking about anything. The unfortunate thing is that words just pop out, um, but the words that are coming out, um, it's seen obviously as transparent, but there's also seeing that, you know, that words are utilized, you know, um, the belief system goes behind, you know, the words like awareness. And um, so it's not just a word, but it's a whole belief system because they usually defend it. So when it's being expressed here that there's no awareness, I can also say that there's no coffee, there's no sun, there's no air, <laughs> there's no, there's nothing, there's there's no no everything, there's no glasses, there's. I'm just saying that there are no words. So when they're defending a word, well, there's no day in this story. There's a defense in the word of like awareness. Or, or, you know, making a position that, that it's all, it's all awareness or, you know, it's, it's, it, again, it's, it's the moment that it's get debated that there is a position or there's something, then that's already a dualistic expression. And again, there's nothing wrong or right about dualistic expression. Um, but yeah. <laughs> aren't words describing the experience, but experience is just another word. Without any word, if we, again, let's go back into that, right? We, if there are no words, there are no objects, there's no subject and object, there's no experience and there's no experiencer. Simply there's no two, simply not two without any words. But there are no words because the moment that the words appear, it is two-ness already. It's already separation. But what's being expressed here um, and what seemingly is being expressed in, in non-duality, there's no two. But somehow it creates this alternative idea of what is by creating an opposite. Hey, Anne, go ahead, please. Hi, Anne. Fun. Oh, hi, Anne. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah. You might have to okay. speak louder though. Okay. I don't understand. There are no words. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand it. Now, words in and of themselves 
mm -hmm. have only the meaning that's given to them inherently mm -hmm. by their meaning. So mm -hmm. it's they're like a they should be like a dictionary. <laughs> so yeah. You open a dictionary and a word has its own discrete meaning. Mm. Does that make, make sense? Yeah, but if you look at the meaning, it's just basically yeah. made a bunch of, made made with a whole bunch of words again, right? Yeah. Okay. So a word will just be made up of more words, and you will never get to the bottom of it. It will just be a never-ending loop. Yeah, you will never I, find the root word of word because there is no word. Yeah, I'm getting confused. I'm getting really confused. <laughs> so, so I, I, I also understand that words are things that people take to themselves and have their own inherent meaning to them, which is why you get people who are positional about things. Mm -hmm. Because when you say a word, it has its own subtle meaning to them, which yeah. might be different to what it means to you. Yeah, but so everybody if, what if the root word, word is if you is just another word with no meaning at all? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what if what if you, you know, uh, you know, take down the curtain or, or, you know, go behind the veil and what's behind mm -hmm. the veil is actually nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I like I like what Leela wrote here. What words are self-referential. They are made up of other words, creating a funhouse of infinite reflections. Words are yeah. thoughts, and thoughts create the dreamlike reality you are in. Yeah. What? So we're just getting into the, the bottom of it, right? Because all these okay. talks about non-duality is just really creating separation. Yeah. <laughs> That's what yeah. we see here. It's just creating another, you know, this version of non-duality. This, what if we yank out the word non-duality and see that it's just a word? Mm -hmm. The moment that think that you're there's non-duality, there's there it re reinforces that there was duality in the first place. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I am still confused. It's this the word, the meaning of the word word. Um <laughs> so if you if you look at yeah, if you um if you look at a word, if you, you know, yeah. if, if you look at a word as it is, right, yeah. what is it made of? I'm Nothing. just basically covering every word <laughs> that has ever been uttered, right? It's made up of, of letters. A bit of letters, cor okay. Correspond with sound. Okay. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so it's just so it's just basically a bunch of indicated. letters of, of of characters of you know one to twenty six letters usually in English language, yeah. and then if you look at the meaning behind it of every word, mm -hmm. it's just made up of more words, which is also a bunch of letters that are you know a, a, a word that a silence that made into sound by phonetics by different letters. Basically, what I'm trying to say mm -hmm. it's all made up. Mm. Yeah. It, yeah. 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 So every single thing that you've thought about or uttered or heard is made up. Yeah. I, you know, and I know that, but I don't know why the word thing is. Because there's uh, a belief, there's a hierarchy all of a sudden, words, because hierarchy is just another word um, positioning that there is a less and there's a more. There's higher and there's lower. And then there's another word called truth, that there are some mm -hmm. words that are, although everything is made up, including the word truth, but somehow truth mm -hmm. becomes infallible mm. and questionable. That's why there's confusion, right? It's this is gonna like just, you know, um <laughs> pulling all the veils all at once. <laughs> There's no, there's no, it's, the, this is just not a subtle thing. It's just I this. I get it. Yeah. yeah. It's just yanking all the, all the veils all at once because the veils are just words. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, but, uh, just it hard. <laughs> so everything what? that you'll ever think about, even when you say, I, but I feel real. Feel and real mm. are just made up of words. Feeling and real are just made up. 
So the only thing that cannot be made up is simply not two. And that's unthinkable. Mm-hmm. That's unknowable. Mm-hmm. Moment that you know it or think of it appears as a word, then it's an illusory veil of what cannot be divided. Mm-hmm. <laughs> when, when I was learning to read, I remember not understanding things until I was about seven. And it was like something had fallen away. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, I could understand what these groups of letters meant. Um, But... um, Yeah, it's, it's something about it being important. I don't quite understand. Yeah, so even the word important mm-hmm. is just made up. There's nothing mm-hmm. important or important. Yeah. <laughs> words. words. <laughs> so they've, they've always been. I'm dyslexic, so it's always been difficult. Words and language has always been challenging and yeah it's it's like it it's almost like a life death thing i can't i can't well this must this must be the biggest you know relief that it doesn't have to be difficult (laughs) it doesn't have to be a challenge because it's not even real (laughs) i'm not even sure what's going on yeah Um, (laughs) Yeah. I'll I'll release the first couple of meetings soon so that people can catch up, you know, because um I think mm. you know just you know, I'm not sure if you were here yesterday, but maybe no, jumping in today. Able to come. This is completely mm. like uh, uh <laughs> this is just really m- minimalizing, minimizing everything that has ever been said before down to the very essence of what is a word, you know, what it's is like it's, it's a dualist, it's dualism. So every single okay. word that will be uttered about non-dualism is um, is pointing to separation. But if we, but if we really look at it, there's no we. The everything that has ever been said, everything that has ever been known, creates mm-hmm. this dynamic separation, this multiplicity okay. of something that cannot be thought of. The words in themselves are like categorizations of yeah, this and yeah, that yeah. and other and not the same and yeah uh, it's it's quite funny because you know like about five years ago when there was a seeing you know that there's nothing separate that you know yeah. I was actually although I listened to a whole bunch of different you know um non-duality at the um I was quite surprised when I was in nothing media, when there were different categories of (laughs) non-duality. I was like, what? Why is there applied non-duality? Why is there awareness? Well, I'm like, it was just so confusing, right? It was just like, what the hell? The only thing that rang, um, you know, that, that that was closest is just the uncompromising that Mm -hmm. there's no two, but still, you know what I'm saying? Even that, even that, you know, um, is still talking in, in words, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And there's nothing wrong or right about that. Yeah. So that's just so what's, what's being expressed. There's a sense of this group and that group, and I'm in this group, and you're in that group, and the language and the the the, the words, even how the words are said and yeah. um, creates the separation. Um yeah, like even if you say there's me or a no me, that's separation already. Mm-hmm. So this is the freedom from words, even from the word freedom. <laughs> yeah. Freedom is not a word. I, I, that's what I said. Yeah, for, this is yeah. a freedom from words, even the word freedom. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, <laughs> because yeah. there's always trying to get freedom, right? but it's just another word. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. But yeah, I'll release those videos um as soon as possible so that that um um yeah. <laughs> I was excited about this three days and, and that first, the first day yesterday, I was planning to do it. And the last day I'm like, Oh, I put it in the beginning. I'll put it in the beginning. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so there'll be a lot of kind of like, but, but it's, it's so a, a lot I of really words. Did miss out. What's that? That, that? I really did miss out. That really was the, the bit that would have changed everything for me if I'd been there on time. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Nothing was missed, just words, more words about the absence of words and the irrelevance this, uh, of words. It, it just reminds me of, you know, going to, to workshops and being late and then kind of like, you know, berating you and saying that, you know, you won't get the benefit of the whole thing now because you weren't No, there. nothing was missed, because actually. The, yeah. Because the no. best of it no. has already gone. But in the okay. story, in the story, in the sequence of the story, you know, I'll, I'll release yeah. that so that, that it's seen. But it's just another story. It's just because it's just okay. a whole bunch of words again. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank right. you, Anne. Thank you. Nothing appears as words, yeah. Hi, Emerson. I think this is next level non-duality. Thank you so much. Actually, this is a step back. <laughs> that there's no such thing as non-duality. <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> Holy checkmate, Emerson. <laughs> yeah. The moment there's a movement, including a word or a thought, an idea, checkmate.
words or stories are never ending. Yeah, it's just never ending. It's just a loop of words. Uh, Vladia goes, thank you, Charlie. Any attempt to give a perfect description in words or concepts to anything is futile. Yeah, like the body mind functions much better without this pressure of conceptualizing and narrating what's going on around me and inside. It's just all stories. It's just all stories, right? So when there is a stuckness in a story, it tries to get at a story, which results in more story, whatever the story is. So it just maintains the story by creating another story made out of words and words are made out of more words and words are really nothing. Just am. <laughs> Hi, Emerson, please keep on chipping away and reminding us of words. Um, if that's all you have to ever do, just be, please can keep on doing it. I came here to battle you against words about awareness. <laughs> now I'm left speechless. Thank you. Thank you. You're not saying anything at, at all, but somehow it feels like love. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you for the answers and the back and the background is so cool. Oh, thank you. I've been changing the background every single meeting. This is background number five. Three. Yeah, five.
oh my goodness, Emerson, every word that I'm trying to bring up does not stand a chance. Holy curl, what's going on? Yeah, that's that's what is being expressed here, right? Because all the stuckness, all of the belief system, all of the meaning, everything that's ever held onto is just really a word. It's so obvious. When 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 a, a word is is put into scrutiny, right? If you if you just put a word out there, and if it really is just seen as it is, that is just made up. Then it 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 detangles, it untangles, it unravels. That even the belief system is the word of that word is just made up because it's just a word that is created to maintain reality. But reality is just another word. So it's just a word. It's just a series of words that supports each other to keep you in a rabbit hole of words. And of course, there's no you because that's just another word. Hey, Emerson, that first intro was so impactful that we're still asking questions about it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I tried to do a different introduction and everyone somehow it goes back to words. I think this is the most silent event that I've ever done. <laughs> hey, Emerson. Oh, hi. Long time no speak. I know. How are you? I missed you. I was going to contact you. you. Yeah. I moved. To yeah, I was giving you, a, I, I kind of knew, how's the place? Let me see, let me see. You can't really see much. It's oh, wow. In process. Wow. Cat on the bed. Um, but I wanted to share, this is perfect because 20 years ago, and this is a story, of course, we have to preface it. I went to a uh, retreat led by... Um, what was his name? 
um, Stephen Levine, no, Noah Levine, who was the like punk rock Buddhist guy. And it was in Joshua Tree and it was silent for 10 days. Mm. And what they told us to, to ponder um, where they gave us a few things to ponder. And one of them was no se- this sentence is false. And it's a Zen cone. This sentence is false. So I spent 10 days sitting there <laughs> wrestling with this. This sentence is false. Yeah. But in order to think it's false, you have to believe it's true. It's but true. Then yeah. Believe- yeah. And then you go around and then every single word dissolves because the minute you say it, the next one, it's false. So anyway, I can't even remember. I just remember sitting in the desert with my head exploding, going, oh, my God, at the end of it, I realized no spoken anything is true. Yeah. Right now that happened 20 years ago. Yeah. But it isn't until you have now just hammered down on the word that I really grokked that that means that nothing is true. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> yeah, not just our our words not true, but words through words, the whole reality, the whole game show here, the whole VR yeah. experience is programmed by language. Yes, <laughs> and and but that, there's not even a language. See, <laughs> right? There isn't language, yeah. so that everything that's separate. So anyway, it just took it like five levels deeper. And the important relative part of this is over the last week, um, you know how Buddha was under the tree and the armies of Mara get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger till you see what they really made of smoke and mirrors and light. Well, my lovely contractor who built this house for me has gone totally batshit crazy and is sending me these words like long emails and long texts. Oh, wow. <laughs> he's just gone into this thing where he's decided um, to just accuse me of everything under the sun personality wise because I'm not grateful enough to him. So I shouldn't give his I shouldn't give his employees sugar. I brought them donuts. Um, blah blah blah. He's going nuts. Nuts. Oh, nuts. Wow. And what's so amazing is I was immediately hooked into it and I'd get up at four in the morning and I'd yeah. generate a response and I'd write it down, and, but I wouldn't <laughs> get send. And the yeah. next morning I read it and then I would recover. I'd go, oh, this is garbage. And I wouldn't send it. Then he'd send me another one the next day. Then I'd do it again until yeah. finally at the end of the week, it just popped and I got, oh my God, this is just a hall of mirrors. Yeah. It's yeah. just an agree, a disagreement about words. And he thinks yeah. I'm this, and I think I'm that. And he thinks <laughs> this, and yeah. I think that. And the whole fucking thing is made of nothing. It's like, yeah. And then you, then this was before your weekend. And then your weekend was like, yes, that's right. happened. I felt like this whole weight come off. So I didn't have to respond because I could feel compassion even for him. Yeah. Because he's just stuck in his definition of the word. Yeah. Whatever respect or yeah. word or whatever his version of it is, he feels I'm not meeting. Yeah. And it was so much relief. It was just like, whoa. Whoa, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And then I realized every conflict, and I just turned on my liberal left radio station, NPR, and literally everything they talk about is, well, what is your definition of yourself? And is your definition of yourself being respected? And are you getting your due because you're a white a white LBG key QT RSP. And if the white black yellow QRSPs don't defend the right, you know what I'm saying? And it's (laughs) just like, you can't even listen to this station because it's all a jumble of yeah words, (laughs) all like word salad. It's word salad. It is. Yeah. And it's, and it's so it's not, it's, and then, then it got to me like, okay, well, you can get really depressed about this because nothing means anything. But then when you get that, it's all just fun. It's like a fun and games. It's just yeah. like, blah, 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 like kids. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Oh, blah, 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 blah. 
<laughs> and if you, it doesn't mean anything. It's like speaking in tongues, right? Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> right. It's the attachment that's the problem. It's the identity that's the problem. The words themselves are innocent. They're yeah. just like a bird song. Yeah. They're just like a fart. They're yeah. just like any <laughs> They're a sound. Even the word sound doesn't exist. But yeah. that, you know, and yeah. it's totally clear now. It's like, whoa. whoa. Anyway. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I had to share. I had to share my, my update since it was so silent. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to call you. I was going to call you, but I wanted, I was thinking that maybe you were still busy with your move and everything. And uh, I know. It's and that was what so was so great about what was her name? Who'd had the fun non-duality fun website. Um, Claire. Claire. It Did you get to talk to her? Cool no not yet okay okay it was i want to i do want to and what's so great about non-duality fun website is it doesn't go as far as you went today by saying words are completely meaningless but it pokes fun at all the non-duality words yeah yeah so yeah. she actually takes the sacred countess out of it the attachment <laughs> yeah. it's so much fun because every word is just a joke in her in her view yeah uh, anyway i recommend that yeah yeah, it's great. Fun website. You know if, you wanna, if you want to, if you want to get very unserious about all this stuff, did you know that she's also moving like you, like the exact same, same situation? Oh, she is. No, I had no idea. Yeah. yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I'll talk to her eventually. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk to her. It's good. Okay. She's, anyway, she's awesome. good to see you. Good to see you too. Good to and see you're you doing too. awesome. And you and I really think you have to take that first morning and put it on the internet, and you're going to get completely dumped on but it's so amazing <laughs> I know. you have to just put that 15 minutes up there <laughs> you really do. okay thank you yeah that's that's what's been apparently kind of like the response that i've been getting for now it's like what <laughs> thank you Yeah, Paulette. Paulette goes, just thought of the Genesis statement that in the beginning was the word and the word was I. Go figure. Yeah, I think we covered that. We were, uh, I think it was Joey that, that posted something like that yesterday. It is quite funny, right? That it's, it's, it's just the I is the separation. The beginning is the separation. Hooray, Casey. Hooray. Hi, Emerson. I'm still stunned and speechless. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> wordlessness seems a good word. Yeah. Yeah. I've been trying to say wordless, but that's just another word. But yeah, you catch my drift. Yeah, it's just wordlessness. The unname unnameable. I think this meeting should have been called um, the last word of non-duality, but that implies that it arrived at something. <laughs> uh, in the beginning was the, the word was God and the word was made flesh and he took his dwelling among us. Wow.
<laughs> Thank you so much, everyone. Going to what someone requested for a breakout room here. <laughs> I guess there's the questions are run dry, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the recording.